plenty of complications in these uh, acetabulum fractures. The early ones are penetration of hardware, infection, drop embolism. And the late ones, we have the heterotopic ossifications, the avascular necrosis, and atrosis. In percentage, this is from the <coughs> statistic of Letournel and uh, the German Jungblut, is a combination of these two, uh, published in the late 90s. This is um, infection about 4.2%, which is quite high. Nerve damage between 6 and 20%. Secondary displacement, thromboembolism, death in 2 to 28%, and paraarticular bone formation in 1 to 4%. Um, um, this is only Kruger, Kruger 4 and 3, whereas 1 and 2 is much more common. We have complications not only in operative treatment, we have them in conservative treatment as well. And here is an example, a posterior wall fragment, not reduced, treated by traction and ultimately neglected after four years the hip is already completely destroyed. After eight years, the fellow has more or less a stiff hip, and he was happy with this for 17 years until he decided to come for total hip replacement. So tough people can survive quite long with their complications. Other conservative uh, complication after conservative treatment is the remaining incongruity. There are fractures which cannot be treated by traction because traction is not effective. There are some where you can get secondary congruency, treat them conservative, you are in a good line, but this fracture here, you can pull and do whatever you want, it will not be reduced, especially the critical part, part of the dome and the weight-bearing area is gone. So if you stop your traction, that will migrate inside and you will develop severe osteoarthritis. That is the final result of such a treatment. This is a severe complication which could have been avoided by proper operative treatment. When it comes to the approaches, uh, the Koch-Langenbeck approach has posterior the problem intraoperative with the vasa glutea superior. And uh, this is here. If you cut this gluteus artery, just by dissecting with the posterior approach, you will not be able to stop it. You have to tamponate it because the artery slips away, is gone behind the uh, pelvis. So be careful about that. And in the anterior one, there are two uh, problems. That is the nervus cutaneus femoris lateralis, which is easily damaged. And a trick to avoid this is when you do the ilioinguinal approach, then you'd simply chop off the tip of the iliac, uh, of the anterior iliac spine. If you do that, you get a, a, a very nice relaxation of all the tissues, and the risk for this nerve is no more there. The section of the three windows becomes much easier when you take off the tip of the iliac spine. And uh, then you have the problems with dissecting, uh, if you are not careful, you may have a damage of the vein, seldom of the artery. And of course, the ductus deferens that was already mentioned. Posteriorly, if you dissect and you are not careful and you do not think about the flexion position of the knee and the extension position of the hip, you will have a high risk for tension injury to the iliac, uh, to the sciatic nerve. And uh, therefore, uh, always do this and be careful. That's why we also never operate on a traction table. We operate only on an ordinary table. <coughs> the whole uh, French um, studies from Gilet and Letournel that was all done on traction table. And uh, we have come away from that and do it on an ordinary table because that traction, what you need for reduction, you can get by a good resident or by a weak nurse, no problem. When you, when you have uh, the posterior approach and you put your plate nicely there, you be aware that if you go down to the sciatic uh, bone, that the nerve is crossing just there. So 
keep him away with the lung and back, the long lung and back. And at the same time, uh, when you put this, you must be aware of the direction of your screws. The, when you put your plate, as I have shown you, and go now with your screw, not, not in this direction. If you go in this direction, you will cross the joint. And this is a very common mistake. Uh, after some time, of course it is not as, as uh, cross as here, usually the screw is migrating here, just touching the joint, but then after some time you see in the x-ray the erosion of the head. That is a clear sign that you miss the track of the screw. So please be careful with that and go here. There is beautiful bone, no need to go into the acetabulum. This is the end of such a beautiful surgery, you see. All the screws have touched somewhere the joint. If the dome is destroyed, the fragments will not follow traction. Lateral traction is seldom useful. Don't do that because it makes this kind of traction often gets infection of the pin. And you will not be able after some days to do it operatively open. Don't do lateral traction. If longitudinal traction is not working, forget it. Go in and do it properly with open reduction. This was a fellow who came from Africa. No traction, simply positioning in a splint. So complications of conservative treatment to a certain extent are only neglection, ignorance. ignorance. Huh? It is a, a bad ignorance of injury. So we came with that. And then if you go for secondary reconstructions, you have a high rate of complications. You can do a decent job. You can restore the joint by bone grafts and whatever you do. And at the end, you are quite happy. It looks not bad, but a little bit of bone formation comes always with secondary procedures. And then after some time, you see uh, the head dislocated gradually, partially got necrotic, and we had to replace it by total hip replacement. Total hip replacement after failed surgery has its own problems. This will not be the topic, but uh, it is a problem. Another complication is if you go for minimal surgery, see, if you avoid solid fixation, if you reduce properly, then you should fix it properly. This surgeon here, he reduced the fracture beautifully, but then he used tiny screws only to support this. So a good job he made bad by doing it incomplete. And you will now see, after post-operative, CT was done to convince himself and to convince the people that he did a good job. And nowadays, with titanium screws and with a modern CT, you can do post-operative CTs. There is no need anymore for Shide oblique views like where is Taka? He always still insists on that. In a modern unit, you have a modern CT, a high-resolution CT, where titanium implants can be subtracted completely. So post-operative control is no problem. If you have not that, then you have to go for this traditional Shide views and Lutronel views. But here he was convinced he did a good job. And now look at what happens. Little by little, huh? this insufficient osteocentesis strokes out. It's a pity because he did a good approach, he did a good job, but he did not do the final tick to the operation. And that is a uh, young man, I think the fellow was 32 years. He had to get a total. And one complication which, is, uh, which can keep you busy for months or years, that is infection. Pelvic infection, if it is crossed, and if it is with MRSA or MRSE, you, you struggle for months and months. This was a lady, acetabulum fracture, everything we removed. But we, it took us one and a half years and I don't know how many operations to bring it to a still spend uh, because of this uh, spreading infection. Very difficult. So be careful uh, with these things. And finally, ectopic bone formation. 
uh, classified in Bruker uh, 1 to 3 to 4, uh, you may have quite often in secondary procedures, later than two weeks, you will develop quite often this. If it's only like that, it's not difficult. It does not make functional impairment. But when you do secondary major surgery in fractures like this, then you will observe more bone formation. Uh, and so your good reconstruction, the beautiful um, congruity <coughs> is not worse than the hip is stiff, like here in the brook of fear for um, periarticular bone formation, which ultimately ended into a hip. So, ectopic bone formations result often from posterior approaches, almost <laughs> never from anterior uh, procedures. Prophylaxis is intomedacine and radiation. At the excision of uh, ectopic bone formation, we do usually late, six, eight months after the um, injury. Very rare uh, complications is non-union. I don't know whether ever one has seen a, a pseudoprosis. I have seen, I think, twice or three in my life. Cartilage necrosis, a vascular necrosis, and osteoarthritis. This is one of these non-unions after acetabulum fractures, uh, uh, incongruity, and of course, some pain. But I think you will not be able to improve this by surgery, except totally. Then finally, the late complications, head necrosis in Littonel's study of 244, 6.5 in the German study, 17%, atrosis in Littonel's 6, 8.6, and in the German study, 40. So you can clearly see how poor the surgeons do operate, that you can derive from that. Now, it is how you look on it and how careful you do your studies. That's it. And finally, uh, something which disappoints you very much is you do a good job in a rather uncomplicated, sorry, in a rather uncomplicated, it looks uncomplicated, it was a 65 year old man and uh, good reconstruction, solid reconstruction and one year later necrosis. Or here, a uh, young anesthetist, about 28, 30 years, he came after a penetration of the head into the pelvis. It's an extremely rare injury because the frame of the acetabulum was intact. Only the, the fullness of the acetabulum was perforated and we had to dissect the anterior um, pillar in order to get it reduced after nine days after trauma. We reduced it well and uh, four weeks after trauma, you see here the impaction of the injury when it penetrated in and uh, after nine months, this poor fellow already developed his necrosis. Or this case, again, looks not bad in the beginning, but then it migrated and we had to replace it. Arthroplasty after previous operative treatment of acetabular fracture is often more difficult than a routine total hip replacement. Uh, it is loaded with more scarring, heterotopic bone, retained internal fixation devices and residual deformity of the acetabular bone. So deficiencies in the acetabular bone were associated with poorer rate of long-term survival of the acetabular components, components in inserted cement. And you see here in these statistics that if you do, if you treat your complication of avascular necrosis or whatever after acetabulum surgeries, the socket without cement they start to fail uh, already here, and the socket with the membrane, they start to fail after 10 years, much earlier than usual. Thank you for your attention.